previously on Fisher's Shop, I made this behemoth. I showed you how I make cabinet carcasses, toe kicks, and face frames. But this thing is far from done. I still need to add decorative arches at the top of the uppers, a couple of drawer boxes and slides for them, some countertops and shelves that'll get stained and finished, shaker-style doors and drawer faces for everything, and finally some crown molding and some hardware to finish it all out. And then I gotta get it installed too. Like I said, there's a lot left to do. So, if you'd stop distracting me and actually let me get to work, I'll get started. The first thing I'll tackle are the three decorative arches for the top of each of the uppers. But before I do that, I want to say thanks to Rockler for stepping up and helping me out with this project. Their products certainly have made it much easier, and you'll see for yourself throughout the video. Alright, let's get into it. The first thing I do is find where the center is on my board. From there, I can tap in a small nail that will define the top of the arch. Then I just flexed a thin strip of wood over the top of the nail and then held it down on each of the ends with a clamp. And then I had something resembling an arch. I used a pencil and I gently traced the shape onto the board from one end to the other. Now I could use the bandsaw and cut out the arch staying just on the outside of the line. Now this next step took me a while. I used my belt sander to remove the rest of the material up to the line and to smooth the whole thing out. But once I had it perfect, I could smear on some glue, get it all lined up just right, and then pop on some clamps. And when it had dried, the clamps came off and it got a good sanding, and then it was done. Then I just made a couple more for the other uppers in exactly the same way. Next up, I need to make a couple drawer boxes and then get them mounted on some slides inside the two end cabinets. I start off by cutting in a small dado in all the drawer sides, and this will be for the bottom panel to fit into. And since I don't particularly enjoy looking at plywood edges, and because I had to work some of it into this build somewhere anyway, I glued on some black walnut edge treatment onto the top of each of the drawer sides. Then it just got flush trimmed off over at the router table. As far as construction, I kept it real simple. Just butt joints and brad nails. The bottom panel gets slid into place. And then the last piece can get glued and nailed in. And voila! A drawer box. Now since the face frame creates a three quarter inch offset within the cabinet, I needed to put in some spacers so that I can mount some drawer slides later. So I grabbed a few pieces that were the same height as the drawer opening and then I popped them into position into the upper corners of the cabinet. Next I could get the rails mounted onto the drawer box. Then, to install the drawer slides in the cabinet, I used the Rockler drawer slide jig, where you can actually load the slide into the jig. I pull the lock back, and it's held in there super tight. Next, I use the offset bar to get it just the right height, zip in a screw, and it's on there. Just gotta fire in one more screw, and then the slide is installed. I just release the lock, and then I can move on to the next one. Super easy. And just to infuriate any of my haters out there, I decided to drive in one random slotted flathead screw. Just for you. Lastly, we can pop in the drawer box and see how it functions. Alright, next up I gotta make some countertops and shelves. A total of three counters for the lowers and four shelves for the uppers. Now I wanted these to have a bulkier look, so I decided to go with one inch thick poplar boards for these. I started off by cutting them down to size over the miter saw. Then to glue up the panel for the countertops, I used my biscuit joiner to help with the alignment and then mashed in a bunch of Ritz crackers into the slots. Once dry, I gave it a good sanding to smooth out the glue seam, and then I told my friend John that I didn't know how to use a paintbrush, so he'd have to do all the staining. 
Each piece got three coats of poly sprayed onto them and they were done. Now to attach the countertops to the cabinets, I chose to use my biscuit joiner to cut slots into the sides of each cabinet that a table clip will fit into. Now this will fasten the countertop down onto the cabinet, but still allow for the wood to expand and contract during seasonal humidity changes. Next up, I gotta make all the shaker style cabinet doors and the two drawer faces. Let's get to it. The first order of business is to rough cut all the pieces that'll make up the frames for each door. Then I can tape them together and cut them to their final length all at once. Next comes this mean looking thing. Rockler sells these rail and style router bits for making shaker doors and this is the rail bit. It's used in conjunction with a coping sled and it puts a tenon onto the end of the rails. You just clamp the rail onto the sled and then run it across the bit to cut in the shape on each of the ends. And here's what the ends should look like once they've been cut. At this point, I clamped each rail onto the coping sled, made the cut, flipped the piece end for end, and did it again. Then it's just rinse and repeat for all the other rails. Now it's time to use the style bit. This one gets lined up to the same exact height as the tenon which was created from the previous bit. Now we can run all the pieces through and this bit will make a dado for the rails and the styles that the door panel will fit into. Okay, now we can glue them together. If you're going to be doing this yourself, make sure you wear ear protection like I am because gluing things together can be extremely loud. Once the rails are fit on and lined up, I can add a bit of glue and then tap on the styles. At this point, they're pretty good, but they really need a bit of clamping pressure to really close up the joints. So I throw on a couple squeeze clamps and I set them off to dry. Afterwards, a little bit of sanding cleans them up and you can see just how nicely they turned out. Next up is mounting the hinges. And for that, I'll be using Rockler's Concealed Hinge Jig. It just fits right onto the back edge of the door, and you align the drill guides to your marks and then set the stop block. From there, you can just drill out each of the hinge pockets. Then simply loosen and remove the jig and drop in your hinges. Repeatability is super easy too. Just grab a new door, tighten on the jig, and drill away. Once I had this jig set up, I drilled out all eight of my cabinet doors in just minutes. Next, I harnessed all my woodworking skill that I've amassed over the years and I managed to make this thing. It may not look like much, but it holds the doors at a perfect height for me to mount them onto the cabinets. I simply rest the door on the jig and then drive in the screws. In no time at all, I had all the doors installed and fitting great. Now the drawer faces went together in much the same way as the doors. However, I needed to fill the 1 8 inch gap on the back so that it would mount flush against the front of the drawer boxes. And for that, I just used a thin piece of masonite that was the perfect thickness. This will keep the center panel perfectly flat even after it's mounted onto the drawer box and the pole hardware is installed. And to get them mounted just right, I use these specially designed drawer face clamps. If you buy the set, you'll get one right side clamp and one for the left side. They clamp onto the side of the drawer box, but they also have another clamp that can hold the drawer face onto the front. You even have the option for lateral adjustment by using a set screw. This will let you attach other drawer faces and know that they're spaced exactly the same as the others. And once I had it just right, I could fasten it on from the inside. I tell you, these little clamps are must-haves if you're going to be making drawers. The last part that needs to be installed onto this build is something I've never done before, and that's crown molding. Admittedly, I was a bit nervous about having to figure it all out, but I figured if anybody can screw it up, I can. So, with boundless pessimism and an unmatched negative attitude, I set out to ruin this part of the build and to make it beyond all hope of repair. But then I realized, my miter saw kind of makes it idiot-proof. 
See, most miter miter saws have some built-in settings so that you can lock your miter angle and your bevel angle in at just the right locations. This lets you lay the molding down flat on the saw. So after I made and assembled the base pieces, I could adjust the bevel angle to 33.9 degrees. Then once I locked that down, I could change the miter angle to 31.6 degrees. Now keep in mind that this only works for crown molding that has a spring angle of 38 degrees, which is the vast majority. But now I can make my first cut. Then I have to reverse all the angles on the saw so that I can make the cut for the mating piece. And then once you tip them up, you can see how they'll go together. Now to glue these, I couldn't think of a good way to clamp these pieces together. So I just used CA glue and I held them tightly against a square until they dried. This actually ended up working quite well. I made some really thin spacers to create a reveal, and then I set the crown up on top of them. Then with everything lined up, I just shot in a few nails to fasten it to the base assembly that I made earlier. Then with it nailed in place, I could flip it over and smush in some peanut butter into all the holes. A little bit of sanding once it had dried and this thing was ready to be installed. And to do that, all I had to do was drop it on top of the cabinet, line it up, and screw it in place. And next I made the big center one. and got that installed too. At this point, everything was built and could be transported over to my buddy John's place. I should have faked an injury, but I ended up helping him carry each piece up and drove it over to his house and got things propped up down in his basement where it could be painted. And for that, I had it professionally done by another friend of mine, Aaron. Yes, I have more than one friend. I have two. I just knew that if I tried to do it myself, it wouldn't come out nearly as good. I figured it was definitely worth it. And I was right. Aaron did an amazing job. And here we are. Install day. The carpet was cut back just enough so that the toe kicks could fit right down onto the OSB floor. I made sure everything was perfectly level and then I could fasten the toe kicks together. At this point, I could locate where the studs in the wall were and then fasten everything back against the wall. Now before we put the cabinets on, I had to cut holes in the back panels where the outlets would be. Then with that done, we could tip the cabinet up and put it in place on top of the toe kick. We cut all the holes for the rest of the cabinets and eventually got all of them in place. Next, I used some lengthy cabinet screws and I fastened each one back into the studs of the wall. I also clamped the face frames together perfectly flush and then fastened each of the cabinets to one another. The next step was to fasten on the countertops and these are the clips that I used in conjunction with the slots that I previously cut with my biscuit joiner. So once all the countertops were slid into place, I could squeeze myself inside of the cabinet like a fat contortionist with a back problem, and I could zip in some screws to fasten it in. Now since I'm an expert videographer, I decided to not focus the camera for this next shot. Here, we lifted up the center upper and propped it up onto some spacers I had made. Now in hindsight, I should have attached this one with a French cleat from behind because it would have given us the ability for lateral adjustment during the install. Plus we wouldn't have the screw heads showing from the front. Granted, we'll hide the screw heads and we'll make it look really nice, but it's just one of those things that you realize after the fact that you could have done differently. Then once that was fastened in, we could lift up and place the upper end cabinets onto either side. These just rested down on the countertops, but they also got fastened to the wall as well as to the upper center. At this point, we could drop in the shelves and then fasten all the doors back on.
The next step was to caulk all the seams. I just ran a real thin bead down each of the joints, and then John followed behind me with a scraper that pushes it into the cracks and removes any excess. This really made the overall build go from good looking to amazing looking. Then the very last step was to put on all the cabinet door and drawer pulls. Now this can be a pretty frustrating task, especially if you accidentally make one crooked or mount them slightly uneven. But to eliminate that risk, I'm using the Rockler jig for mounting this kind of hardware. What's cool is that you can actually mount the hardware onto the jig itself and then lock in the spacing so that it's perfect. It takes all the guesswork and measuring out of it. Next, I set the offset bar so that the handle gets mounted at an ideal height, and then I can lock in the stop collar. Drill out a couple holes, push the screws through, and mount on the handle. And that's it. It couldn't get any easier. And once you're done with all the right side doors, you can do the left side by removing the extendable stop and sliding it back in from the other side. Tighten it down, and you're good to go. Adding the cabinet hardware really did put the finishing touch onto this whole thing. I mean, would you just look at it? It's fantastic. I'm pretty sure this is my biggest build to date, and I'm super thrilled with how it turned out. Admittedly, I was pretty nervous about this project. It was well outside of my comfort zone, but I figured that if I'm not pushing myself to learn new skills, I'll never get any better. And now, after finishing the task, not only have I learned a whole new collection of skills, but I've gained a lot more confidence into what I can accomplish. So if you're thinking you'd like to try building something like this, but you're a little apprehensive, I encourage you, just go for it. Thanks to Rockler for helping me out on this project. Their jigs were tremendously helpful, and they saved me a ton of time. I'll have links to each of their products that I used in the video description below. Hey, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, give the video a like, and drop me a comment down below. Well, stick a fork in this project because it's done. Time for me to start on something new. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Holy crap. Oh, was I supposed to mix this up? Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. We should probably mix. Yeah, we should probably mix that up. Nice going, John. Already ruined it. Oh, crap. Oh, oh geez. Ooh, hello. Oh, it helps if, uh, that's a good drill bit there. Is it bent, or did I just put it in crooked? I just put it in crooked. Well, wow. yeah. operator over there. Yeah. Holy poop sticks. Now you gotta get the screw out of there. Can you reach in there with your fingers? Oh, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still on there. Magnetic. It's magnetic. Get it right out of there. All right. All right, give me five. Good job. Helper. Oh, crap. <laughs> Lake, what are you doing? You're ruining my shot. <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. Um, isn't this the front of the door? Oh my gosh. I just put the hinges on the front of the door. <laughs> I just mounted the hinges on the front of the door. Um, I get to make a new door. Oh my god. This is why you're paying me extra. That's right.